Hello, this is Brett Etheridge with Dominate the GMAT. I'd like to work through a sample GMAT problem with you that one of my students brought to me this week. It's a fairly difficult problem involving exponents that I thought you could benefit from as well. So let's take a look. Here's the question. I want you to give it a try first. So go ahead and press pause and see how you do. You have two minutes. Go. All right, how'd you do? It's a pretty challenging question, right? And it encompasses a lot of the exponent rules that you need to know for the GMAT. And before we actually dive into tackling this question, I want to take a little aside and I want to teach something that's really important. We're trying to solve for m, and right now m is an exponent. And so what is the underlying strategy when you see a question like this on the GMAT? Well, consider an example like this instead. Let's say they had given us that 2 to the 2n equals 16. What would we do with that? As a general rule, when you see a question where the exponent is, in the, uh, is the variable, and that's what you're trying to solve for, you want to try to create a situation where you have the same base. Because if you can do that, then all you have to do is set the exponents equal to each other. Because if the bases are the same, then the exponents will equal each other by definition. And so you need to be a little bit creative. How can you create a situation where you have the same base? Well, 2 is already a prime number, so we can't go lower than that. How can we get 16 to a base of 2? Well, 2 to the what is 16. Ah, 2 to the 4, right? So 2 to the 4 is 16. So we can rewrite the right side of this as 2 to the 4. The left side is 2 to the 2n. And by definition, if those two things are going to be equal, then 2n must equal 4. So we have 2n equals 4 in that case, because the bases are the same. And then it's easy to solve that n equals 2. So that's obviously an easier version of this question, but we essentially want to do the same thing. We have the exponent in the, as the variable. How can we make the left side look like the right side? Well, first things first, let's simplify. Let's work on the left side a little bit. And we need to recognize our rules. Our rules say that 1 over 5 to the m is the same thing as 1 to the m over 5 to the m. Those are equivalent. And then likewise, that would mean that 1 to the 18 is the same thing as 4 to the 18. So that's important to understand. Now, it doesn't matter what m is. It doesn't matter what 18 is. 1 times itself a gazillion times is still just 1. So rewriting this again, this is the same thing as 1 over 5m times 1 over 4 to the 18. And then, of course, anytime you're multiplying fractions like that, 1 is just the numerator. And then the denominator is 5 to the m and then 4 to the 18. Ah, okay, so now we're somewhere. We're looking somewhat more similar to the right side of this thing, but now we have to be creative. And remember up here, we were saying, okay, how can we get the same base? Well, we have a situation here where we have a 2. Well, that's not the same as the base of 5 or 4, but wait a second. 2, well, 4 is actually the same as 2 times 2, so maybe we'll do something with that. Well, how else can we be creative? Ah, well, 10 can be factored, right? And that's essentially what you want to do. If, if one of the numbers in the base can be factored, you want to do that. Because 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. Ah, 5. 5 is in the denominator on the left side, so maybe it'll be helpful to have 5 on the denominator on the right side. And obviously, I'm kind of talking stream of consciousness, but this is the thinking that you want to be doing in a problem like that. So we've already kind of manipulated the left side of things. How do we manipulate the right side of things? Well, we already started off, and we recognize that it's the same thing as 2 times. Well, 10 is the same as 2 times 5 to the 35. Okay, so let's continue to build this thing out. Well. I'm just for simplicity's sake, because we're dealing with exponents, uh, going to say that 2 is the same thing as 2 to the 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that exponent there. And that's something that you'll want to do as well. Now, we also recognize that 2 times 5, all raised to the 35 power, is the same thing as 2 to the 35 times 5 to the 35. And if you need to prove it to yourself, you can do it with smaller numbers or revisit your rules that you need to know for exponents. But those two things are equivalent. All we've done is broken them apart, broken them apart from inside the parentheses. So now we have a string that's maybe a little bit closer together, right? Because we have the 5 to the 35. Ah, maybe it's going to be 5 to the 35. Hmm, maybe. 
Let's see what 4 to the 18 is. Well, can we combine this any further? Sure enough, we can merge these two things together because 2 to the 1 times 2 to the 35, remember, same base, you add the exponents. That's the same as 2 to the 36. Same base, right? Because the rule says that, for example, x squared times x to the fourth is just x to the sixth. Same base, you add the exponents. So that's all we did there, times 5 to the 35. Okay, now we're close, right? 1 over 5 to the m, that's 5 to the 35, times 4 to the 18. Hmm, we don't quite have 4 to the 18. Ah, but remember what I said up here, find the same base. We already have a base of 2. Over on the left side, maybe we haven't simplified enough. 4 can be reduced, can it? Just as I did here, 2 times 2. So in fact, in fact, I'm going to have to draw this over here. This is the same thing as 1 over, well, 2 times 2, that's the same as 2 to the 18 times 2 to the 18, just break it apart. We already saw that that's possible, times 5 to the m, right? Well, what is that? Same base. What do you do? Add the exponents. That's the same as 2 to the 36 times 5 to the m equals, and then the right side of things we've already reduced to say that that's the same thing as 2 to the 36 times 5 to 35. Ah, look at that. 2 to the 36 the same. The ones, the numerator is the same. So what do we say? Same base. All we have to do is set the exponents equal to each other. And in this case, m actually equals 35. That is why the answer, the correct answer, is actually answer choice D. A difficult process to get there, but really all we did is just merge things together or divide things out looking for a common base. And I haven't taught you any new rules. I mean, this is exactly the, the rules for exponents that you should know. Nothing that I said shouldn't have made sense to you. You just have to get a little bit creative on questions like this. Your goal should be same base, ideally, so that you can ultimately set the exponents equal to each other. And lo and behold, after all that work, it worked out beautifully to where the exponent m must equal the exponent 35. And again, the reason answer is d. So well done. If you got that, review this video if necessary. Make sure you know these rules.